Let's point our telephone lines to Washington, D.C., ladies and gentlemen, where Senator John S. McCain is standing by on the lines this morning. Since the since the big vote last night, and uh, John, you know, I've got a, about a million questions I can begin with. I tell you what, instead of me beginning with a question, why don't I just ask you to tell me, now that the sun is rising over the country, it's the day after, what, what are you thinking right now? Well, I'm thinking that uh, we have seen, indeed, a, a historic event. Uh, that is a major reform uh, or a issue resolved uh, on a pure partisan basis with the majority of the American people opposed to it and done in the most unsavory Chicago-style sausage-making that I've ever seen in the years that I have uh, been here. And the consequences uh, to our economy and to our future are such that we can't give up the fight. We cannot give up the fight. We have to go challenge it on constitutional grounds. We have to keep up the demonstration Administrations. Five of our five uh, members of Congress from the state of Arizona all voted in favor of this in direct contradiction to the overwhelming majority of Arizonans who say they don't want this, including our governor, who says we can't afford it. So, um, look, we'll keep up the fight. If you believe that uh, the will of the people is reflected sooner or later in our nation's capital, we will repeal this. And we will start repeal now, right after we get into this reconciliation sausage making uh, here this week in yeah. the United States Senate. Well, um, as long as we're talking about how underhanded this thing seems to be, you have been uh, a long, long pro-life uh, Republican long time mm-hmm. I mean it's just you just that's just the way it is and and we've talked about this thing many times Stupak we everybody thought he was you know sort of uh, something out of the ordinary a pro-life Democrat and yesterday a, a number of people across the country were shocked at, at apparently how he folded I mean we we knew that the pressure was on but to fold under the flimsiness of, at that point in time, an unknown executive order, what do you make of this? Well, the best I can make of it, if uh, I'm sure you have it there, Michelle has it for you, uh, <laughs> today's, today's Wall Street Journal uh, on the opinion page entitled, quote, Inside the Pelosi Sausage Factory. And then it goes in, and the, the one of the uh, underneath it, one of the lines, Michigan Rep. Bart Stupak sold his anti-abortion soul for a toothless executive order. I can't put it any more succinctly than that. I mean, an executive order. Do you know what's going to happen? Is the pro-choice people will challenge that, and of course it'll be thrown out. You can't have an executive order that overrides laws, and clearly, these law this. This legislation allows for federal funding, admittedly a roundabout way, but it allows for federal funding for abortion and a reversal of the so-called Hyde Amendment, which you know about. By the way, it, you know, you just... It's so disgusting. If you read this article about the sausage making, the guy from California who demanded more water, the woman from uh, Florida who said she wanted more money for NASA, there's a new provision uh, providing $100 million in extra Medicaid money for Tennessee, retiring Tennessee, Representative Bart Bart Gordon flipped to a yes vote on Thursday. I mean, it's, it's disgraceful. It's no wonder Barry, that the approval rating of on, on the part of Congress, this kind of thing, uh, Americans find disgusting, and, and it's corruption. You you're talking though about states, and we, what is it, thirty seven, thirty eight states, whatever it is. Yeah. They they say that they're going to fight it. Arizona is indeed one of them. And uh, this morning, Newt Gingrich is quoted as saying, "This will not stand," and on and on and on. Last night, I was listening to some of the commentary and. Uh, and uh, Charles Krauthammer was opining, and, you know, yep. he's, he's, he's always fascinating to listen to. He said, you know, this is never going to be overturned. And he said that Republicans who are predicting a bloodbath at the polls in November may be overreaching because as the sun rises this morning and this thing is going to be the law of the land, initially things won't really seem to have changed. And by the time they do, the inexorable change begins the anger will have diminished at that point. And so this is something we're going to be stuck with forever. What, what is your comment to that? 
Well, look, I, I admire Charles Krauthammer as much as any uh, uh, observer and commentator that, not, that I've seen. But I say with great respect, I wish that Charles Krauthammer had been to the town hall meeting on Saturday that I went to in Prescott. I wish he could have gone out to Sun Lakes with me to the town hall meeting I had there and the town hall meetings we've been having all over the state of Arizona and the country. I wish he would go to, to one of the, have, have the opportunity to go to one of the tea parties that have been going on in Arizona. Uh, th- this, uh, in, in all due respect, the liberal elites, and I'm not putting Mr. Krauthammer in that category, uh, but the rest of the elite, uh, by the way, who were popping champagne corks last night while we have 17% real unemployment in Arizona, but they think that the American people will figure it out, that this will be good, that, that they won't mind this process he went through. They do. Barry, the caller sent to your show. Do you think they're uninformed? As I've, I've, never se- on? I've never seen anything quite, quite like it. I never it. have either. We thought, think- immig- we thought immigration was a watershed moment. That, no. this is, it makes that look like a Sunday school picnic. This is, I, 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 look, I re, again, I want to reiterate my respect for Charles Krauthammer, but I don't think he realizes the depth of the anger and frustration. And it isn't just the health care issue. It's the $12 trillion in de- debts, the $1.4 trillion deficit this year, the $1.5 trillion deficit this year, next year, the earmarking, the pork barreling, the, the, the corruption that goes on here in our nation's capital. Uh, hey, look, I'll be, you and I will be together on your show for years to come as we have in years to past. I predict now, and you'll have it on tape, that I think you will see a seismic uh, election this November, the likes of which we've not seen since 1994, and maybe even greater than that. Market and and I'll, uh, you know, I guess it was old Mo Udall said the politician's prayer is that may the words I utter today be tender and sweet because tomorrow I have to eat them. <laughs> if that if I turn out to be wrong, I'll come on your show and tell you that I was wrong. But that is not reflective of the mood of the people in Arizona today, in my view. Uh, can you can you hang on for a second? Let sure. us pause. All right, hold sure. hold on for one second. Senator John McCain joining us from D.C. And, of course, the obvious question is then uh, if – so we have the seismic shift. John, I'm, I'm going to ask you to comment on this in a second. Let's say we have the big shift in November, but what do we do between now and, well, forever on this, on this thing? How do we go about stopping keep, uh, How do we keep up the passion? Yeah, how do we keep the passion up, and, and then how do we turn that into something meaningful? And, by the way, John, I did write that down. <laughs> she, she's got it. <laughs> <laughs> KFYI, folks. Very young, 550 KFYI, KFYI. Uh, they do not believe that government uh, is qualified uh, to run health care systems, uh, the health care system in America. They don't believe that the government should get between themselves and their doctors. And 85% of the American people are satisfied with the with the insurance that they have. Uh, let, let me just mention to you, they, these increases in taxes also are significant. Medical devices, uh, whether it be that or health insurer's fee, uh, the cat, so-called Cadillac plan, that means the, those plans that uh, exceed a certain level that the government will decide. And I want to mention one other area. There's a program called Medicare Advantage. It is uh, gives uh, uh, enrollees who are at Medicare under Medicare a chance to make some choices, like for dental care, or eye eye care, or others. And there are 330,000 uh, enrollees in the state of Arizona, seniors in Arizona. They are going to cut out that program. That's 330,000 citizens of Arizona that are going to be cut out of it. Meanwhile, if the Florida Gatorade provision stays in, 800,000 enrollees of a Medicare Advantage in Florida will be able to keep their program. That's called disparate uh, impact, and I think that's unconstitutional, to favor the citizens of one state over another. Yeah, the 14th Amendment, it, I don't know if it's that simple, but it yep. says all of our laws are supposed to be applied to all of us equally. Exactly. Um, it just clearly favors because of the sausage making uh, that they've done, and they clearly favor citizens who happen to reside in one state over another based on purely on buying the vote of their representative. Now, there was a lot of talk over the weekend about the reconciliation bill mm-hmm. that still has to get back over to your side. Yes. Um, is what's going to happen then? 
Yeah, but let's remember what the deal is. They talk some of these Democrats in the, in the House to, to say, look, we'll fix – you don't like this provision. We'll fix it when we get this reconciliation bill to the Senate. Well, they sold them a bill of goods, my friend, because there's 51 Sen- – 41 senators, Republicans, who have said we will not vote for any change because we believe that reconciliation is wrong to be used on an issue of this magnitude. Reconciliation was meant to be, as you know, just uh, to uh, resolve some budgetary differences or tax differences between the two houses. Now it's being used to justify uh, a fundamental change in one-sixth of our gross national product. I mentioned to you Caterpillar, $100 million they say they're going to lose this this year. One year. year. One year. $100 million. Right. You can imagine what it's going to do to every other business and corporation in America. All right, listen, we're down to just a few seconds. Sure. Just final, final question here. The, the issue of the president trying to get through his other bills, immigration, education, financial overhaul. Has, has he expended all of his capital? Are these people, meaning the Democrats over in the House and Senate, are they going to ride with him on another unpopular thing? They may, but there will be no cooperation for the rest of this year. They have poisoned uh, the well in, in what they have done and how they have done it. And again, uh, I, my message, and I know yours, is to get involved. If you believe that governments respond to the will of the people, we can win this fight still. We cannot give up. Our kids' futures depend on it. Maybe not yours and mine, Barry, but our kids and our grandkids. What do you want people to do? What's the what's the best? I want them to contact thing? their elected representative. I want them to continue to demonstrate. I want them to sign up to this uh, st- uh, ballot initiative we're going to have that says that Arizona will not be forced into a program that forces our citizens to purchase health insurance. I want them to get involved in the primaries and select the candidates, the best candidate candidates that can win in, in November, and keep up what they've been doing. I mean, if it hadn't been for uh, what the American people have been doing and the people of Arizona, we wouldn't have won governor's races, Virginia, New Jersey, and Scott Brown. John, as always, thank you for coming on the air. Thank you for all you do. And again, thanks to the brains of the outfit. Michelle, thank you. (laughs) Thank you, John. Senator John McCain.